Hey guys, so welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a simple kit swap tutorial. Um, I've seen so many kit swap tutorials out there, but none of them really go into detail. So today I'm going to show you exactly how I do my kit swaps, um, which is kind of revealing the secrets of the trade. But I guess I struggled when I started um, around this time last year, and I think it's really important that people know how to do it because it can be such an effective technique when you're editing photos. So um, yeah, welcome to this tutorial and uh, here we go. Okay guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is click on the select and select a mask section and then what you want to do is click select subject and what you want to do is kind of change it around a bit and check if any areas have been missed and adjust the smoothness and contrast and everything and hit OK and you should have a cut out render and that's the easiest way I find to actually cut out images and renders in um, Photoshop. Now you have your cut out render, what you want to do is select the spot healing brush and I'll time lapse six is quite time consuming but what you want to do is go over all of the details on the shirt um, and remove them with the spot healing brush. You might have to use some different techniques like cutting out certain parts of the body if there's a logo underneath or you might have to worry about having to erase areas if you go out of the render but realistically all you have to do is use the spot healing brush on the logos on the shirt and they should disappear in um, in the way that it's supposed to. I mean it's Photoshop's AI so if you guys know any other better way to remove logos on a shirt, let me know in the comments, but this is the best way I've found so far um, in my experience. Okay, so now you have um, removed all the logos on the shirt. You wanna you wanna start um, <laughs> editing any cuffs on the shirt or logos um, or the collar. So making them all the same. So I'm doing our art of spurs here. So I want to make the cuffs white and the collar's already white, so that's helpful. And then all I need to do is add the spurs logos. Um, so if you're doing say. Mbappe to Real Madrid you would do the same here and then you would just add Real Madrid logos onto the shirt so it's pretty self-explanatory but I'll time-lapse it here and you can kind of get a good idea what I recommend you do is use the warp tool on some of the logos to try and make them look like they're on the shirt because a lot of times people put them on dead straight and it looks a little bit unrealistic but if you can try and warp them in a way where it actually looks quite real then it's more believable and the kit swap in general looks a lot better so yeah I'll time lapse that now for you and uh, hopefully you can take that and uh, use it in your own edits So now this is where the actual detail comes into it and this is how you make it look as real as physically possible. So uh, lots of people have different ways of shadows and highlights. I prefer to use the double exposure effect. So use, you reduce your exposure to have your shadows and you increase your exposure to have your highlights. So what I'll do normally on a kit swap is get the original image because it has all the original lines and you can see it in its full form. Then I'll add an exposure adjustment layer and reduce the exposure, reduce everything and Im improve the clarity. And all you wanna do is go over using the white brush on maybe an 8% flow. That's what I choose to use because an 8% flow is not too strong and you can always go over it twice if it's not strong enough. So you just want to go over all of the creases in the shirt, all of the little dark shadows, the details on his arms, 
everywhere where there's logos. So when you've just added logos, you want to add the creases into those logos. So let's say you add it in the middle of the shirt and he's bent over and you want the creases in the middle of the shirt, you're going to have to do that to make it look quite real. I always like to do it on the hair and also on the side of the face, like in the ear crevice, um, by his nose and often by the chin and under the neck. And basically you just want to make it look as real as possible. And then after that you want to add a, another exposure layer and you want this one to be the highlight so you want to increase the exposure and increase everything on there and then you want to invert that again so to invert a layer mask you use control uh, CTRL and then I so if you don't know how to do that search it up on any Photoshop YouTubers channel literally just how to invert a layer mask so you use control I and then you paint again with 8% flow and you just want to go on the other side of the crevice, so not the shadow side, but the one where it's the highlight, and increase all the highlights, and you want to go on his forehead, and around his neck, around his shoulders where the, like, the light is shining down. So you basically just want to try and make your edit look as real as possible, um, and I'll time lapse that for you now, but it's quite simple when you get used to it. At, start, at the start it can seem really daunting, but you just want to try and really show that those logos are actually on that shirt even though we both know they aren't. Alright, so now you have finished that, you should have a pretty detailed looking shirt and then this is how I make them look almost hyper realistic and a little bit cartoony so that people know this isn't a real photo from in game. So what I choose to do is convert it all into one layer and go to filter, high pass, 10% and then I change the blend mode to overlay and then I reduce the fill to about 70%. And what this does is it just really adds kind of a HD aspect to the render, really emphasizes those shadows and highlights and makes the entire thing look a lot more clean and crisp. And that's basically the finished edit. So I'll show you that now and yeah, then it's done and I'll show you the final product and hopefully you will have something similar, um, if not even better, because this is probably not my best kit swap and it doesn't show how far you can take kit swaps but it's a very basic one but i just thought it'd be really good to show you guys the basics and how to actually do a kit swap with photoshop